Hi, I'm Darren Cox and we're here today at the wonderful Glebe Fishery. It's a lovely place this, the weather's perfect and we should catch plenty of fish. I'm pleasure fishing today but I'm here specifically to talk to you, talk to you about match fishing. And as everybody knows, normal matches, we've probably only got five hours. Sounds like a really long time, five hours to most people. But using that time effectively is the most important thing. If you can use every single minute, every hour that you've got in those five hours, then you'll catch more fish. But it's all about making the right decisions. And one of the things I do in, in, in match fishing, especially places like this, is I try to break my match down into segments. And I like to call it sort of three segments. And by fishing the correct method at the right time within those specific segments, I believe that I can get the best out of my match. A lot of the time, it doesn't always go to plan. But I think that if you follow that plan, then you will get the best out of your specific peg every time you fish. And when you get a good peg, you win the match. When you get an average peg, you've got a good chance of winning the section. When you've got a bad peg, you, sometimes you can't do a lot. But the bad pegs are great learning days. And that's when you can often learn when your segments can be changing. And for me, it's the segments that count work out exactly how to fish those segments and when to fish them and you'll get the best out of your match. Let's talk about the first segment now and how I will actually approach it. There we go, it's a good start to the session is that. <laughs> What I've done is, you obviously see I've started on the feeder. Um, a lot of these lakes, especially at the Glebe, have got good, good feeder pegs and, and good, they've got an, what is effectively a far bank that's not fished quite a long way. So it's not accessible from the pole, but you catch on feeder and you catch on, on waggler. But you often find on places like this, especially when you've got anglers all down one bank, there's a lot of noise, not a lot of disturbance initially. So the fish tend to just back off. So naturally, one of, one of the best things to do is start where the fish are. When you talked about maximizing your time, if you start long, um, as far, right where the fish are, then you've got a good chance of, of kicking off your match in the way that you want it to carry on. And that's using these segments that I'm talking about correctly. So I started on the feeder. It's gone around straight away, which it often does at this place because it's such a good fishery, but it does in many, many places. And, and if you get it right straight away, straight away, you've got a good fish in the bag. So you're already, you're ahead, which is great news. I mean. Don't get me wrong, I've not just started on the feeder. Um, I've primed my swims carefully. I've tried to understand exactly where I want to fish. I've plumbed up. So I'm planning for the whole of the day and, and I'm making sure that every area of my swim that I want to fish is ready for whenever I need it. For example, I'll start, I'll plumb up, I look for the ledges, I look for the ledges short, I look for any ledges, any signs, any variations in depth long. And I'll set my rigs up accordingly. And then what I'll do, which I've done, is I'll feed however I believe is right. So for example, I've gone straight out on the feeder after feeding. I haven't fed on the feeder, my first feeder full's gone in and it's caught me a fish straight away. Already I'm seeing signs now, but again, this is normal at um, places like this. Fish come to the noise to a certain extent on the feeder because the, oh, there you go, another one straight away, which is a good start. That's telling me the fish are coming to the noise now. So already I'm starting to think about what else I'm gonna do in the day. Um, I've set up a 13 meter line for, for either pinging or uh, fishing with a small pot on the pole. I don't want to feed too much because the, there's a lot of fish here, but they're not stupid. They, they tend to back off. So the idea is to f just feed a few six mil pellets. So I've, I've just put about 25, 30 
six mil pellets in straight on the 13 meter line and I've set up another line at top two plus two which is probably one of the deepest parts of the lake it just starts to go away I've not gone into the very deepest part but it's a it's a lovely ledge and it's what I call a really good ambush point for when you're fishing close in we're talking about fish not necessarily wanting disturbance on the bank but that ledge is the last port of call for them um, they will come to that ledge but they'll often not go any further if it's a day where you can't catch in the margins and the top two plus two is a really really good line to fish feeder line for me is always a really good gambit um, we're, we, we're not allowed to use method feeders here I should say we, we can use method feeders but it's got to be running and it's got to be 20 inches so a cage feeder is the order of the day it's a really good method put in just micros with a tiny few maggots in and I've got a banded four banded dead maggots on the hook just nice and quick catches everything fish love it and I'm not actually casting to the far bank today because I, I don't feel like I need to I'm, I'm on an end and um, there's an aerator in front of me so that aerator is it's giving automatic cover if I look at the rest of the lake here uh, then it's the only cover on the lake away from the far bank so automatically it says to me that that will be good for attracting fish and it's it's important to use those bits of cover like I said often at the start of the match the fish will they'll, they'll go back to where they feel comfortable and if you've got some cover you've got overhanging trees on the far bank then anything like that is what will encourage the fish to hang under it often some of the best bags are where you can get tight to the far bank but you've got a little bit of cover next to that um, tight area but a bit of depth helps but you know I'm, I'm looking around all the time I'm trying to understand what's happening in my peg and also with match fishing you've got to keep your eye on what the other guys are doing you know if, if one guy's often started you've started on the feeder another guy might have started down the lake on the pole or the waggler Keep your eye on him because he's, he's actually testing the water for you as well and it just makes it easier for me to get a judgment of what's going on and for the moment this feeder is a really really good method and it's a good starting gambit starting to catch a few fish already just dropping a few pellets in there on the short line because I think that could be another good line today I don't know when it will work but I just keep priming it, dropping a bit of bait in so that every line is ready for when I need it. And that's what's important. It's about, you know, you've really got to multitask on matches. It's, I'm, I'm playing a fish now, I, I can't rush it, so I'm better off feeding a little bit of bait whilst I get the chance. Because when you chuck these feeders in, often it goes around straight away and you haven't got that time to feed. It's a good start to the day. Some good fish and real good weight builders. So if, as I say, if I was in a match, I'd be just keeping my eye on everyone else now. I'd just sit wanting to see what's going on. But they'll be looking at me now. They'll be watching me and thinking, hmm, that's three fish he's had he's doing well and um, you can often find that what you're doing can change people's matches as well so it's very very um, important that you, if you have belief in what you're doing that if you're doing well don't change your match don't change what your plan is unless you really have to so whilst I've got this rod in, because it keeps going around all the time, I'm just going to show you exactly what I do in terms of bait, and what I've been using, how I've been doing it. Quite simple really, and it, it, it's a, a nice and easy style. Micros in the um, feeder is really, really important. That's one of the best holding baits. Ground bait can be very good at times, but I've found places like this where there's lots and lots of carp, micros will hold them. Yes, they'll blow them about in the peg, but it holds them really well. It gives them particles to feed and sip, sip basically sip on without actually filling them up these activated coarse pellets superb really good the main reason is 
um, they take quite a lot of water in. Um, and what I like to do is prepare them at home. I think it's really important that you prepare them the night before for whatever you're doing. These ones here, um, basically what I do, night before, put them in some cold water and leave them in the, just cover them with cold water in a bait tub and leave them for about a minute to one minute, 30 seconds maximum, then completely drain it off the water and put them in a plastic bag. They look like they're too wet, chuck them in the fridge and leave them overnight, put, leave some air in them and what you'll find is they come, they come up in the morning lovely and fluffy and it's perfect for when you feed a fishing because what you can do is what I've done on the bank here is I've, I've just slightly dampened them off again and I can just keep adding a little bit of water as and when I need so if I'm, if I'm going in and I'm getting bites instantly I want that bait to leave the feeder as soon as um, it hits the water pretty much because it's only shallow water because that tip's going round and I want to leave that bait there for the next fish so it's priming the line for the next time and all I've done I've been I've been catching on um, basically on um, red maggot. I'm hair rigging in a band three dead red maggots and I put a few of these maggots in the uh, feed basically just to let introduce the, the, what I've got on the hook to the fish. They don't spook if they see a red maggot spinning around but because they're eating them so they're, they're much more likely to pick up my hook bait at the same time. A good change bait and a really good bait over here is six mil just a single six mil cell pellet. I like these because they're, they're a lot lighter than the activated coarse pellets. And I just think they just offer, you know, it's like, it's like having a, um, basically a, a wafter or something like that, but it's just a little bit lighter. It's not stark and bright, but they can, they can see it quite quickly, even in dark water. And you've got that lovely cell smell as always. It's brilliant. And obviously the wafters, if you get catching lots and lots of fish, you can use the same band pull the, the band through these these wafters and you can just continue to catch. Just got to be careful what size hook you're using, make sure it, that your, your, your wafter balances correctly in the water. Um, either use a normal boiler that doesn't f float at all if you're using a small hook like a 16 or, or an 18, but if you can get away with a 14, an 8mm wafter or, or even a, um, a 6mm wafter will be perfect. So that's pretty much covered most of what I've done in terms of feeder fishing for the start so let's move on let's move on to the, the next sector and I'll, I'll, I'll try and show you what I do in the, in the next part of my fishing session which is a pole and we're going to go straight on to top two plus two. Okay so I've had a, I've had a great session a really good start to my, my, my session on the feed I caught lots of fish um, but people started to catch a quite a few fish on a pole around me. I know we're pleasure fishing today, but it's just a good indication. But what I've been doing, I've I fed my 13 meter line with a pot. I've been pinging a few pellets over that um, with a catapult. And I've also been feeding this line with just like three or four pellets, just throwing them in. Now I'm actually gonna fish this swim. I'm gonna stop throwing them in. And I've got a little pot on my pole. And basically I'm just gonna go in, keep it really nice and tight. Because even if there's just two or three fish there, if I can keep it nice and tight, I should catch those fish fairly quickly. I and mean, that was a bite straight away, that's a good sign. Um, so there's obviously a few fish on it already. But they've had quite a long time to settle, and I think that's what's important, is you're building the confidence of the fish whilst you're catching fish in another area. And that is the best thing you can do, because as soon as you come on a line like this, if it's ready, it'll just switch on like that and you'll catch straight away. And those fish are feeding just down that ledge as I explained earlier, just, they're just really confident. They feel comfortable being there because they're in that slightly deeper water. It's on a ledge, so you're actually fishing where the, the bottom is quite hard. It's probably the most perfect place to fish uh, with a pole on, on a fishery like this because you can see every indication because you, you're close to your float, it's not far out at all. And by one of the mistakes that a lot of people make is they feed too much on this line. You do not need to feed much at all, just three or four pellets all the time, keep them coming in. I can see from where I'm fishing now, because obviously I wasn't looking there all the time when I was on the feeder, I can see there's, there's quite a few bubbles fizzing about. 
and they're over a slightly bigger area than than maybe I would want them. But that oh there you go, that's that's I had indication before that and it's gone straight away. But those fish are probably over because I've been throwing them in. They're probably over a slightly bigger area. So it's my job now to just tighten those fish up, even if there's only three or four there. Tighten them up, get them underneath the pole tip where this pot is feeding accurately and then I should be able to line a few fish up and that's what it's all about. It's about, as I say, using your time effectively. If you lose feed all the time and there's only three or four fish in your swim, then the chances are it'll take you a lot longer to catch them. So by putting that pot on, you're tightening everything up and becoming more accurately and that is helping you again to use your time effectively because you, you're drawing fish into it. It's like aiming at a, a target, you, 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 you're narrowing the target and making life a lot easier for yourself. And you often find that some of these fish on, on this line are much bigger than feeder fish as well and this, this already feels a good fish. And this is where you can build a big weight of fish as well. If you, if you start to catch them on this line, they come, can come thick and fast. It's a nice fish. There you go. That's a nice start, is that? Gives you a bit of confidence to some fish there. But it's often easy to catch that first fish on this line. The most important thing is that you actually go in and catch another one fairly quickly. Because by catching another one fairly quickly, that will tell you that that line is ready and primed. If you go in and don't get a bite, then there maybe was only one or two fish on that line and you've, you've maybe spooked them or you've caught it. And that then will be the signal to potentially change your line. But if you've got your judgment right, then you're fishing the right line at the right time of the match. And maximizing your timing. So just tightening everything up watching for signs and indications. I've got a little back shot on my rig as well. It's, it's not particularly windy today, but sometimes we're quite high up and you're getting the odd gust and just by using a back shot sort of four to six inches above your floor, you can just keep everything really tight. And again, you're fishing right under your pole tip where the bait's going in you're in total control of your rig. Well, this, this short line is getting better and better. When I first started, I was getting a few silly liners. Well, as, as I say, I've been, I've been throwing bait in. There was obviously quite a few fish in the swim, but they were, you know, they were a bit scatty. So I've, since I've been fishing it, I've not thrown anything on, in on that line. And I've started just potting in all the time and it's got better and better now. The pegs settle down, not as many liners and proper bites, proper gazundas. That's what we want. Still feeding the longer line. Hopefully I won't need that line, but you've got to make sure that it's ready to go whenever we need it to go. Another nice little mirror. Beautiful fish these are. All kinds of sizes. Same stamp of fish as was catching on the feeder. I thought they might be a little bit bigger, but they're, they're, they're the same sort of fish. Anything between two pound and six pound. But, uh, just fishing a banded pellet on the hook. The same, a, a six mil cell. I'm putting a few in the pot there. I've just got a little tiny pot on. Put four or five in. Every time I go out, keeping it as tight as I can, using, I've got a white post. Straight out there is a marker, going three quarters of the length down my number five section pole, lowering the rig in, putting a bit of bait in, straight on top of it, and then being patient. You get a bite, it's normally a good bite. If you can get it down to the bottom, all in a straight line, then the bait settles and you can see it's a really good bite, and that's exactly what we need. So just putting a few pellets in on that 13 metre line, just priming it so it's ready whenever we need it. 
I haven't fed a margin line. You know, I've been explaining about these segments, and there you go, straight away, nice, nice bite, really positive bite. You tell what's going on. You feel like you're a bit more in control of the the swim now with that little pot on. And basically, as I say, I've not fed my margin line yet, but we're two and a half hours into the session and I need to start looking at the clock, I need to keep an eye on people around me, see if there's anybody going in down the margins. And then normally in a five hour match, in a day match, you would expect to feed in the last two hours. So I'm getting fairly close now to, to thinking about putting some bait in, because these fish are definitely active today. And I'm sure that we'll get a few in the in the margins later on when it's the right time. But certainly fish feeding nicely today. These are only a lot of these are only two and a half, three pound fish, but they're pulling hard at the moment. Obviously plenty of oxygen in the water. There you go. Not common. So the rig's fairly simple. I've got um Four number eights strung out as a like a strung out bulk, about three foot from the hook. Um, I've got a size 16 LWG hook to diameter 16 super soft, going a super soft, and literally two droppers, two number nine droppers. Um, I've got a band on just feeding the cell pallet onto the band, just having it so the hook's protruding. I'm as dead depth as I can be, pulling it up really carefully, that slope's going away. And I know that if I push it out too far, that I will be under depth. And that pellet will just pull my float tip down further. So that's sort of telling me exactly where I need to be fishing and then just going out dropping it in bring my pull back a little bit and then being patient if I can I'll get some pellets in that pouch don't need to look at them just ping them out look up look for it there it is and that's prime for next time put a few pellets back in there for next time use my time effectively Float settled, not getting many lines at all, but when I get a bite, it's a, it tends to be a good bite. So like that, <laughs> instantly that, like clockwork. So this line's getting pretty good now. I'm enjoying it. And if I was in a match, it'd be a um, perfect situation, really. Not, not got a particularly strong elastic in, it's 2.3, 2 it's what I class as my summer grade elastic. The little fish will pull it out a long way, the big fish will pull it out a long way, but you can, with using pullers and that these days, it's, it's just so easy to use a slightly lighter elastic. You don't bump as many fish, you're more in control, and it just makes for a much better situation. Use too heavy elastic and you feel like you're bullying the fish all the time. Because even if you're not bullying them, that yourself, even if you're not pulling hard, sometimes the elastic is pulling a little bit too hard for you. You get that odd lunge where those fish are just nicked in the corner of the mouth and they might just ping off. So it's just a case of being in control of them, but don't bully them. I always say to people when I'm talking to them about fishing and playing fishes, they're hard enough to get on the hook in the first place, so why pull the heads off and risk losing them? These are, I say, these are real good weight builders in competitions, these. Steady away. When you get a big weight in the net, you can start to push it a little bit as you go further into the match, you get confident, you, you learn how to, to play the fish know how much pressure to put on them and 
you get have that much more confidence when you get a lot of fish in the net. Oh, that fish coming towards me, it should come straight to the net now. There you go, perfect. Just lined him up, it's a case of getting them in the right direction, understanding when they're ready, turning them, and then they're just simple to net. Nice common, lovely fish. It's all going to plan at the moment. <laughs> So bait for this um, top two plus two line is really simple and for the matter um, the 13 meter line. Just as I said I started I put in 25, 30, 6 mil cell pellets with just a few bits of corn that's all. And then I'm topping up the same but no corn. They, they want the pellet today obviously really good I'm just putting in 5 or 6 pellets lowering it in. The reason why six, sixes are so good I think is it's sort of an in-between size. I mean if you were fishing a pellet waggler a lot of the time you want to fish eight mils because by the nature of fishing a pellet waggler you tend to be fishing a long way out. But the good thing about six mil is generally you can get a six mil wherever you need it um, when you're fishing a pole. Whether you're throwing it in or catapulting in or potting it in they just seem to fit perfectly in this situation. The beauty about them is that they're just a little bit too big for a lot of silvers, roach and small skimmers, things like that. Don't necessarily want them. For example, if I put a lot of micros in there, I'd attract a lot of fish, but not necessarily the fish I want. What I'm looking to catch is just carp, and maybe, maybe an odd big bream, never does any harm, because um, all weighs well in the end. But I just want to try and get Good fish, good quality fish, carp, big stamp fish, two, three, four, even bigger, five, six pound fish to build that weight up. Six mil pellets tend to do that. The final thing to, that I can say about six mils, how good they are, is if I need to, they can make it, they can ring the dinner bell for me, they can make a really nice noise. So even though I'm, I'm potting most of my pellets in at the moment on that line, I don't necessarily need to sneak them in, that was a bite then. What I can do is put them in my pot, push them out, drop them from a height, and it means that I'm still making a noise. So I was throwing them earlier and it was creating a good noise. It's really important to remember that those fish may have come to that initial noise. You might need to keep that noise going in to keep the fish there. And six mils for me do everything I need to do. And the cell ones, well, Carp just love cell pellets, don't they? <laughs> okay, this, this top two plus two line has been really, really good for me. Um, fish have kept coming, nice and steady away. But <laughs> I've been just throwing a few mates in like that, thinking, oh, I'll just have a look down there. And I look down and there's odd fish starting to come in and it, it's three o'clock, you know, it's that time of day where as your plan comes together, you want to be thinking about going down the edges that's when you can build big weights that's when the big fish come in and feed don't get me wrong this has been really good and I've been pinging my 13 meter line all the time now under normal circumstances I'd be wanting to try that line but I've had a really good session on my top two plus two my 13 meter line I've not ignored it I've kept feeding it so it's there it's primed and it's ready but I really do think it's time to actually go down put some proper amounts of bait in on the margin lines and just see it. I can just check in and see if they're there. And if it goes for me, I could have two hours on big fish or bigger fish, which would be really good. But if it doesn't work, then I can go back and make sure I can still keep feeding this by hand, this one and, and, and catapulting. So let's have a go. I always say in fishing, if you think it, do it. So I'm thinking it now, I'm gonna get on it and uh, try and catch some down in the margins. So first of all, what I'm going to do is put a little bit of bait in. I, I've been throwing tiny bits of bait in down there, but I need to get the fish centred into one spot. I've plumbed up there. There's a little bit of a plateau there. I'm going to put some ground bait in with some dead maggots, some corn, some, just a few micros and some big pellets. But I'm, I'm not going to go mad. So I just want to feel my way in. And I'm also going to feed to my right hand side as well because I've got an edge. I've got a long side to this this bank and if they come in there the chances are I won't even fish this other spot that I'm gonna 
put bait into, but it's all about being prepared. I can put it in and prime it and it's ready and I can then fish it. If I don't do it now, it'll never be ready for if I need it. So I'm hoping I don't need it. And the fish are suggesting to me that I won't need it, but we'll soon find out. So I've got a proper rig on here. I've got a size 12 hook on. I can put a bunch of maggots on. I've been throwing a few maggots down that edge. So the fish are used to seeing maggots. Um, maggots is a great bait, really good bait, and bunches and bunches of them. It looks ridiculous. It's like Medusa's head, but it's a nice big visible bait. The point of the hook showing. And I've got a little bulk, so I can fish it positive. It's 0.3 float. So it's really positive for the depth of the water. It's a two millimetre top, so the top's buoyant. Leave a bit of top showing, so if I start to get liners, the float will dip, but it won't bury. And what I'm looking for when I'm fishing down the edge is that proper bang under, because anything else is likely to be a liner. And when you're getting liners, you do not want to lift into them. I can see a fish down there already, but these fish, oh. <laughs> I actually pulled the rig under. Pulled, went to pull the elastic out, that one. I might have spooked him. See, one of the things is that at this time of day, you can go into the margins too early. Now, you've got to remember, I was catching really well on that top two plus two. And you can sometimes make that mistake where you see one fish or two fish and there's not enough fish down there to actually catch them. But I think, I think there's some fish down there now. I can see them spinning around and a few swirls already. They're really responding to that ground bait by the looks of it. So I would hope, you see I had a liner then and I just don't wanna, I don't wanna lift, lift that rig up until I get that proper bite. And you know, the float can move about all the time. As long as I don't lift up, most of the time, when the fish brush the line, you shouldn't spook them. They should just brush past, because often it's not them touching the line, it's the vortex of the water when they're kicking with the fins and everything like that. There you go, I, I just totally ignored that. I wanted to strike, but I knew I mustn't strike. So there's some fish down there, there's lot, lots of fish coming in, and they're good fish as well. Just need to be patient. Give it a few minutes. That let, let that bait settle. You want to be trying to find out what the best bait is they want. And I often find the best thing to do is to put a mixture of bait in, in, in the feed. So what I'll do is I'll put some ground bait in. Look at that, that's, a, that's just a classic example. I've been fishing with a bunch of maggots on there and I'm getting signs and liners and all sorts and couldn't really put one on the hook. I've changed to double corn, which is a really visible bait, and it's buried straight away, which proves you should always try and find the correct bait. If, if you've got fish in your peg and they're swirling and boiling, they're sat on the feed eating it. And if you're not catching them, you're, either your rig's wrong or the bait you're using's wrong. And that's just, really really sunk it home as I was saying before I was rudely interrupted with this uh, carp <laughs> um, I, I put a ball of ground bait in with micros dead maggots a little bit of corn and some um, four mil pellets and a few six mils just mixed it all up just those particles on the bottom and like I said giving the fish food options the opportunity to decide what they want to eat and if there's a preferred option that's what we've got to try and do that's what we've got to try and find now this what's really interesting this is my, this is my second fish down the edge first fish was a bream and my second fish this is a good carp and it's a 
it's one, one and a half to two times bigger than most of the carp I've caught on my other lines. So it just shows to you exactly, look at that, it's a good fish is that. Just proves how important it is to prime these other lines because if these margins come good, then they, boy, they can come really, really good. You know, that's, that's six pounds easily, that fish. Which is not necessarily a big fish for margins, but chances are they'll get bigger. And I'm just putting a few more particles in there. Feeding in margins is the most, probably the most critical thing. It's very easy to get it wrong. And for years now, we've found that it's often better to feed again as soon as you catch fish. Now, I'm not going to do it now because I might, see, I just spooked a fish then. But it might be that I need to refeed again to get enough fishing to catch them. Because, oh, there you go. No, come off. <laughs> that was in the mouth as well. So I'm not going to feed again with the pot. I'm just going to put a few grains of corn in and see if I can make it happen like that. Fish there. Corn's a great bait for this style of fishing because you can say you can use a, a decent sized hook. There's not masses of particles in the peg at any one time, so, but the fish are hunting it down. They're fat, looking for it. Fish there now, liners. They've just got to be patient because they're big fish and they're not daft. You know, they'll hover around your bait, they'll leave your bait alone until, it, until yours is one of the last Last particles there, look at that. <laughs> Think I need to feed a little bit more. And I'm gonna do it. So again, just put another ball of feed in. Just Squeeze it a bit. I don't want it to go down um, too lightly. I want it to go down quickly. It's a it's a heavy mix. Lots of particles in it. Lots of food from. So I want it to go to the bottom so they can actually hit it on the bottom rather than taking it as it's falling through the water. It's only shallow, but they can make a mess of your peg. These fish, if um, you put too light particle in, you can see already there's three or four fish on that feed now. The toughest thing for me is actually getting a bait down in between them. Plenty of fish there. There you go. They're definitely coming to that mix. That's um, something I think is really important, especially this time of year, is you've got to try and understand how much feed content the fish want in the ground bait. And the mixture is, it's quite a simple mixture, but it's a lovely mix. I use um, the margin mix a lot for this time of year. There's lots and lots of food particles in it. Um, lots of nice smells and there's lots of fish meal in it as always. But it's got bits of hemp and stuff like that. And, and, and when you mix up correctly, it's quite a, a heavy mix, which is exactly what you need for this type of fishing. 
You want it to be on the bottom. You want the bait on the bottom so the fish stay down on the bottom and not follow it up or push it up. But I often mix it with the method mix and that's a much finer um, ground bait. And it just means that you can sort of cut your mix according to what you think the fish want. And this time of year I use like 80% margin with, with a bit of method in it. But in the cold months or colder months where the water's getting out a bit cooler and you don't want to give the fish a lot of feed content, then you're better off using 100% or 80% method and cutting the margin out. But this time of year when they want loads, loads of food, then I use that. And the other thing I do is, probably notice lots of these venues, the, the water's quite green. And what I'll do is add some of the colorant, the Captivate colorant. Oh. And, excuse me, these, this fish is pulling hard. <laughs> and I just green the, green the mix up. And that just, just I, I love to match the color of the ground bait with the water or the bottom. On, on a clear venue, I match it with the bottom of the lake or the river. But on a lake, I'll match it with the colour of the water. Because that's a nice fish again. Look, they're, they're, these are such different fish to what I was catching earlier. And with that green, that green in the mix, it just makes it a lovely, nice dark mix, and the fish don't mind coming over it. Sometimes, if the water is a little bit clear and you get that um, colour right, they'll just come straight over it and not worry about it. Other times get it too light and they'll, they'll spook away and you put your mix in and you'll see those fish spooking out. This is the mix here and you can see it's that lovely green colour that I was talking about. Uh, lots of big particles in it that are actually in the margin mix itself. So it's all the time, it's the, the, the ground bait's working. It's a heavy mix but it's on the bottom but there's lots of bits that will fizz about and make, make a nice noise under the water for the car but again most importantly you can see there's lots of bits of corn there's lots of um, micros a few four mils and six mils and dead maggots and what it does there it just gives you it's a bit of a, a buffet when, when i go to a buffet there's loads of stuff and i go to the, go for the stuff that i like and there's enough there for the car to decide what they like and there's enough there to keep them over it, eating it, until you put some more in. And it's up to you to put on the hook what you think they are eating most of out of there. And then it's a winning formula, because then what will happen is that float will go under every single time. And instead of getting a liner, you'll get a proper bite. And that's when you will increase your catch rate dramatically. Plenty of fish there. There you go. Well, the margin line, as I thought, has uh, come really, really good. It's solid. Fish are much bigger. Um, and if I was in a match, it'd be a, the perfect end to what's been a very, very good day. And now, uh, match conditions are a lot different. But hopefully today, what I've tried to do is show you how I split up my match into what I call these segments. By, by breaking a match up, by trying to understand what baits I need to catch what fish and what method and what area of my peg. When is the best time to fish those pegs? And when should I be considering to move on to the next peg? Always, always at the same time maintaining the momentum of priming every single line. I've had a, um, a feeder line at the start of the, the session. That's segment one. I've had top two plus two. Segment two, uh, that was very, 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 very good and caught me a lot of fish. And all that time I'd been priming a 13 meter line, pinging pellets. Pellets have been really, really good today. 
until I came down the margin and maggots has been very good and corn on the hook as well. But I've been priming that 13 meter line. I've not actually gone on it today. I've not used one of my key methods that I wanted to, but I haven't needed to because I've filled my time the whole of the day by catching fish. I've been putting fish in the net every segment and I've made use of the three main swims that I've fished. But I could still go on those other lines now because I've kept feeding them, I've kept pushing, I've kept all the time, I've kept what I class as, I've kept the plate spinning. If ever I need that one of those other lines, it's ready for me at that point in time. And you know, no matter what fishery you fish and what style of fishing, in terms of matches you like to do. If you split your match up into these segments, if you try and understand what's going on the right time of day, every match and every day, you get the best result you can out of your peg. What an amazing fish to actually end the session with. I've had a fantastic day. I hope that you've learned something from this session because I certainly have every time I go fishing I'll learn. Look at that for a really great end to the session. A really beautiful carp. Let's get him back. <laughs> <laughs>